Come on, come on, get it! Yes! Touchdown Bears! Can't beat that Rex to Muhammad connection. Well, today's the first day of the NFL season, and if you're a Bears fan like me, you usually start this day very optimistically, but it doesn't always end that way. And today, I'm going to be talking about the expansion of a football and the physics of that using my Walter Payton autographed football, and I'm going to be relating that to stomach capacity and stomach expansion. And then I'm going to eat all this food I would eat if I was actually at the Bears game today. And wait till I tell you how much it would have cost. Stay tuned. You're watching Eating Cereal. Alright, so this is a bunch of food that you can get at a football game. We've got four bratwurst, four hot dogs, four burgers, some pizza, and some nachos. And the meats are all artificial, they're all vegetarian. And at the football game, this amount of food would cost about $145, and I got it for uh, around $20. So I'm pretty happy with that deal. So uh, I'm just going to snap my fingers here and we're going to get started. So this football is a bit underinflated at the moment. It's at about 5 PSI gauge. And let me explain to you what gauge means. In the ambient air around us, the pressure of the air is about 14.7 PSI absolute. Meaning that on every square inch of your skin, there's about 14.7 pounds pushing on it because of the air molecules running into your skin and pushing on it. Now, the reason that you don't feel it is because from the inside of your body, your blood vessels and everything else are pushing back at the same pressure. So that's the pressure on planet Earth, and it, on Mars, it's roughly one-tenth of that. And the air is roughly 79% nitrogen, 20.5% oxygen, and the rest is argon, carbon dioxide, and other elements. And... At this pressure, it's an environment that we are comfortable in and that our bodies have adapted and evolved to live in. Now, if the pressure in the football is 5 PSI gauge, that means that the inside of the football is 5 PSI higher than the outside. So in other words, the inside pressure of this football is about 19.7 PSI gauge. This little valve right here keeps the air from exiting the football. And if you followed the deflate gate scandal with the Patriots, you are now aware that the regulation pressure for an NFL football is between 12 and a half and 13 and a half PSI gauge. And normally when somebody says 13 PSI, they mean 13 PSI gauge rather than absolute. So let's consider what a pressure of 13 PSI does to the materials within the football. First, let's look at the anatomy of a football. And if you want to see a football being cut open, the YouTube channel What's Inside has a really good video of that happening where you can see the layers. There are two layers of a football. The interior layer is rubber or polyurethane, while the outer layer is cowhide, and the laces are nitrile butadiene rubber. The interior is made to be the same size, if not just a little bit larger than the outer layer so that when the interior is fully inflated, there are no points within the football that are not pressurized. Now, we're going to examine the stress of a football. In an engineering sense, stress is equal to the pressure or tension exerted on a material or object. In other words, is the total amount of force acting on each square inch of the actual material in the football. The stress on an enclosed object, such as a football, is a function of the interior pressure of a football. A football is a prolate spheroid, that's the name of this shape, but for simplicity of calculations, we're going to assume that it's a sphere, because actually calculating the stresses within this shape is beyond the scope of this lesson. 
Here is the formula for the material stress in a pressurized sphere. Sigma equals PR over 2T, where R is the radius of the football, and then T is the wall thickness within the football. So if the pressure is 13 PSI, the radius is 4 inches, and the wall thickness is about 0.4 inches, then the stress calculates to be 65 PSI. So what we're going to do now is look at a stress-strain curve for the material on the interior of this football, vulcanized rubber. Now, if you've ever sat in a material science class, you've seen plots like this many, many times. And what this one's telling us is that for vulcanized rubber, tensile strain at a stress of 65 PSI is roughly 100%. And what that means is that the rubber doubles in length when this type of pressure is applied. Now, a football doesn't double in size when we inflate it, so what's happening here? And the answer is because the leather outer layer, leather is a much stiffer material than vulcanized rubber, so this is the expansion limiting factor here, and it's not going to give nearly as much as the vulcanized rubber. Oh, this is terrible. So now, let's relate this to the expansion of the human stomach. The main component of the stomach is muscle fiber. Now, for simplicity, let's also assume the stomach is a sphere, even though it's a much more strange shape. And there are several things that can limit the expansion of the stomach. One is the amount of fat between the stomach and the skin. Stress and fat layers can be painful. But the main inhibitor of stomach expansion is the stomach wall itself. Stomach wall consists of an elaborate network of muscle fibers. And the fibers uh, stretch in the same way that vulcanized rubber stretches within the football. The main difference, though, is that since the stomach is in a biological setting, the tissue can adapt. If the stomach is stretched far enough, it can adjust during the next relaxation period by reinforcing itself with more protein and thickening the tissue. Whether or not this is safe in the long term is not clear. So now that we've related the expansion of a football to the expansion of the human stomach, let's see if I can expand enough to finish off all of these football foods. Uh, if I take one more bite, I'm going to lose it. So. No more for me. I, yeah, I underestimated. I bit off more than I could chew. It, um, and yeah, this stuff really, it all just tastes like cold shoe leather now. So, so yeah, no more for me. Ho hopefully the, uh, hopefully the bears fare better than I did today. But, uh, yeah, just, uh, tune in next time when I'll be eating something better than this. This has been eating cereal.